ready. I'm not hungry, uh, but I will have some orange juice. Oh, honey, I think you better have more than that. I really don't want anything. Bets. Hmm? What's going on between us? Nothing's going on. Well, maybe that's the problem. What do you mean? Oh, I think you know what I mean. You and I used to have such a beautiful relationship. And ever since the other night when I had to lay down those new ground rules for you, things have been so strained between us. Like for instance, right now, you aren't saying anything at all. In fact, you hardly even talk to me at all anymore. Yes, I do. No, why, when I ask you a direct question, you answer it, yes, but that's about it. It seems to me that you spend most of your time at home nowadays up in your room. You want me to study, don't you? Yes, yes, of course I do. But you used to manage to have a little time down here. I enjoy your company, you know? Now, if you feel that I've been so unfair about laying down these new rules, then I think we should discuss it. I'm perfectly willing to listen. Well, I don't see why we should. They're set, and that's all. Adults are always right. No, not necessarily. Well, even if they're not, they make the final decision anyway. So what does it matter what I think? What matters to me. You know, Cynthia, I told you you could have Lois come over here and study. Now, I don't see that you've invited her. Oh, well, what's the point? You won't let me see her after school, outside this house. You won't let me see any of the friends I was oh, beginning to make Oh, Betsy, that's not true at all. I didn't say you couldn't see your friends. I merely said that I wanted to know where you were and who you were with. Now, is that asking too much? Yes, it just puts me back where I was before. Nowhere. I'm different from all the other kids my age. Did you need to tell me that all of the other kids in high school are able to come and go just as they please? Most of them. Without their parents' knowledge or permission at all? Yes, they are. I don't know. I find that off. Excuse me. Hiya, hi. hiya, 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 hiya. Hi, Bet. I'm going to get my orange juice now. I just thought I'd remind you it was my day off from the hospital. I'm going to pick up Andrew over at Ellen's. We're going to take a drive to the country. Oh, yeah, I remember that, and yeah. I told Ellen. Good. I'm going to take Doug Campbell's little boy along with us. Oh, oh good. That's, that's nice. You all right? Yes, you, yes. You seem upset. No, no, not at all. You got problems with Betsy? Why do you ask that? Well, I'll tell you, ever since I walked in on that party she was throwing that little nut, I felt them coming. Oh, John, come on. Well, I suppose you're upset at having to leave her by herself again. You are going to Lisa's wedding next week? Huh? Yes, I am. Why are you asking me all of these questions? Hey, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. No, on the contrary. I wish there was some way I could help out. I know how difficult it is for two parents to take care of kids today. And when I think of yourself doing it all, all alone, well... well I, I appreciate your concern, but I really would like to have a talk with her before she goes to school. Okay, okay, okay. You want me to take off? You don't mind. Right. I'll see you tonight when I bring Andrew by. All right, fine. Good luck. With what? You talk with Betsy. Will you, Bennett, take this woman to love, cherish, and protect from all harm as long as you both shall live? I'm waiting for your answer, Bennett. I will! If there is anyone present who can show just cause why these two people should not be joined in wedlock, let them speak now or forever hold their peace. I have just cause. I'm glad I arrived in time to stop this marriage. Bennett Hadley tried to kill me. He's possessed with such a wild jealousy that I fear for Lisa's life if she marries him. Lies are all lies. I love Lisa. I'd never harm her. What about Ruth? I loved her, too. Until she betrayed me. You seem to have no proof of your claims, since no one can show just cause. Wait. Let... Bennett, please don't go through with this. You know what will happen. The same as with Ruth. 
the same terrible nightmare as before. Bennett! Very well. Let us proceed. If you will place the ring on your bride's finger and repeat after me. few days next week. Yes, you're going to Lisa's for the wedding. Yes. And I'm not going to have a party if that's what you're thinking. Uh, that's not what I'm thinking at all. But you know something? It's not that I'm against parties. I love parties. In fact, I wish you would have one so I could help you give it. No. There's nothing I would enjoy more than having this house full of laughter and know that you're enjoying your friends. Maybe you'd enjoy it, but the other kids wouldn't. They don't like the idea of chaperones hanging around. You can't have any fun or anything like that. Okay, uh, we'll talk about it later. What I started to ask you was, would you like to go out to the farm with Valerie and Kate for the few days that I'm gone? Valerie's invited you and she said she'll drive you into school every day. No, it wouldn't work. Why not? Because I wouldn't like it. I mean, the farm is miles away from nowhere. I'd be completely cut off from everyone I know. Oh, come on. You wouldn't be cut off. Besides which, you know, you used to love to visit the farm. Yeah, I used to. Before. Oh, hasn't been that long ago. And Kate would be there. You know she adores you. Kate's young. She's just a kid. Betsy, she's a little younger than you are, but she's not. And I don't want to spend my afternoons baking and my evenings popping popcorn. I mean, that's Kate's idea of fun, not mine. Oh, good, good morning, morning, dear. dear. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Oh, hello, Betsy. Hi, Mama. Oh, I'm so glad I got here in time to see you. I thought you would have already left for school. I'm leaving right now. Um, Kim, yes. is it okay if Lois walks me to the bookstore after school? Yes, of course. Thanks. Bye-bye. Goodbye, dear. Mm. Boy. Things aren't going well. Oh, a bit sticky, I'm afraid. Well, you and Betsy seem to be on pretty friendly terms. Oh, Ellen, I'm not getting through to her at all. She resents the rules that you've laid down for oh, her? I'm afraid she does. You know, I would love to ease up on them, but I just know it would be the wrong thing to do. I'll be so glad when she really finds herself and all these teenage insecurities are over with. I hate to tell you this, but a mother's worries about her daughters never end. They just change. Oh, Ellen. When they get to be Dee and Annie's age, you worry about them making the right choices for themselves. They're about their being happy. Annie's feelings run very deep. There are times when I don't know what she's feeling or how to help her if she's in trouble. I know, just, just bring it a few more times, because I know my, uh, my housekeeper's up there. All right, thank you. Henry, glad to see you. Bennett, how are you? Fine. Good, good. Have a seat. Uh, thank you. Where's Lisa? Oh, she was uh, she was up and gone before I woke up this morning. Final shopping spree before we uh, return to the Willows. We're uh, scheduled to return tomorrow. So soon? Doesn't seem soon to me. I'm anxious to leave. This this city does strange things to me, Henry. I can't seem to stand the pressures I've. I've had bad dreams, headaches. I haven't been able to do much writing either. I sit at that typewriter for hours and the results are... Bennett, maybe you should try to get out of this hotel suite more often. Oh, I do at night with Lisa. We go out and eat, go to shows, but... It, it, seems, it seems as if the, uh, the city's closing in on me. Well, try to enjoy your last day here. Yeah. I'm worried about Hester, too. Oh? Why? I tried to reach her by phone all yesterday afternoon, and uh, there's no answer. 
You know, I, I think I'll call Sheriff Hargraves and ask him to take a drive out there and check up on things. Matter of fact, I think I'll do it right now. Bennett, Bennett, you, you don't have to do that. Hester is all right. How do you know? Well, she called me the night before last. Here in New York? Yes. Uh, she said she was going away for a day or two. It's funny she didn't call me. Do you have any idea where she's going? Well, I, I really shouldn't tell you this. She asked me if she could borrow my car. She wanted to go to the Moorcliffe Sanitarium to see Martin. Bennett, I know how you feel about Martin, but after all, Martin is Hester's brother. How can I forget that? Why is she going to see him all of a sudden? She told me he's a hopeless catatonic. That he, he can't speak, he doesn't even know what's going on. The chief psychiatrist called her and told her that Martin had begun to make a slight improvement. That he'd begun to say a few words. Well, neither the staff nor the psychiatrist could understand them. And they thought that maybe Hester could help them out. It was all right to come by. I was delighted when you called me from the courthouse. Uh, Chris and Nancy get off to San Francisco, yes, okay? Yes, Donald said they did, yes. And they're excited about the trip. Oh, I bet they are. You know, Nancy is disappointed about missing the wedding, though. Oh, I imagine Lisa is sorry not to have them there. But the rest of us will just have to make up for it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Tom called this morning and said that Bob is thinking of going. Oh, good. I hope he does. But please, Lisa, a great deal. Well, it'll depend on Dana when she gets back. Sir, may I offer you a cup of coffee? Mm, no, Kim, no, thanks, no. Now, uh, what I really came by to talk to you about is the... Well, it's a concern I have about Lisa. Now, it may sound strange, but... I still have negative feelings about Bennett that just make me uneasy. And uh, Well, I hope I'm wrong, but... Oh, what is there that's bothering you? Well, look, even you were startled when, 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 you know, for Bennett's strong reaction when he saw Lisa in that dress that, that belonged to Ruth. Well, yes, it was, but he's a very emotional man. Yes, but that doesn't excuse his behavior. No, no, it doesn't. But, you know, I think we have to remember he's a writer, and his emotions, I suppose, are always on the surface. Mm -hmm. yeah, he took that right into his real life, too. You see, I can't forget how jealous a man he is. And not, not only of me, but every, every person that comes in contact with Lisa. Oh, she knows something. I think that may have changed a bit. Lisa said he was terribly friendly to Tom. He certainly was with me. I, he seemed uh, genuinely glad that Lisa had uh, a friend that she could talk to and rely on. Well, <laughs> that's a big improvement if, it, if it's genuine. It seemed to me it was. Well, that makes me feel better then. I just wish we could locate Ruth. Knew she was all right. Then I could stop worrying about everything. Well, is there any reason to think she isn't all right? Nothing concrete, but... Well, then what? Look, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to get you all stirred up about Ben and Hadley, but... Look, I want you to promise me something. When you're up there next week, if you sense anything wrong or unusual... <laughs> Oh, Grant, this is going to be a wedding. Well, I, I, I know, I know, but just the same. If, if you have any feeling that, that, that Lisa might be in jeopardy of any kind, please call me right away. Well, yes, of course I will. I just hope I don't have to. Well, so do I, but I had to say it. Uh, excuse me. Hi. hi. Listen, oh, hi, I think if we're going to the country, this jacket's going to be a little too thin. Oh, okay. Oh, I didn't know you had company. Hello, John. Hi, Grant. Bets, would you get the door, please? Uh huh. Go get him. Oh, Go get him. Hi, Hitch. Have a good day? <laughs> yeah, he had a good time. I had a good time. How you doing? Fine. Good. Oh, look who's back. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> Next, my boy, gonna be hugged for me. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. I'll take him upstairs and change his clothes. Okay, <clears throat> you run along with this. Okay, come on in. So long, slugger. <laughs> you two had fun? Yes, yes, I bet he's very tired, but we had a very good time. Went out to a dairy farm about 20 miles out of town. Oh, boy, I bet he loves seeing the animals. Huh? Yeah, I could hardly pull him away from him. Did he and Brian get along okay? Yeah, they did very well. Marsha Campbell was very good handling him. 
Oh, I didn't know she was going along. Yeah, yeah, I dropped them off at their house about an hour ago. Didn't oh. I mention that earlier? No, I don't think so. Oh. Listen, I'm sorry. I'm just about to put dinner on the table, so I can't stand around and chat. Well, you've never had the time to chat with me, yet you always find the time to talk with other people. What other people? Well, Grant Coleman, for example. He was here again when I came this afternoon. That's two times. Yes. Is he here in business? No, he came to talk about Lisa. Huh. Well, I'd be willing to talk to you about anything, even Lisa, if you gave me the time of day. Oh, John, I'm sorry. I... I didn't mean to be short with you. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. Can't help it. It's the way you react with me. Well, I, I didn't mean to. Um, listen, would you like to stay and, and take potluck with us tonight? Potluck? Yeah. It's got to be better than what I'm going to have. I'd love to stay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's just one thing I want you to be careful of. And that's what you say to Betsy. Mm -hmm. She's very um, on edge right now about parties and, and teenage rights, so I don't want her to be any more in her shell than she already is. I promise to be the picture of diplomacy. Okay, thank you. Thank you for asking me. Well, so you uh, take your coat off and make yourself at home. I'm going to go ahead and put dinner on. Want me to help? Oh, thanks. No, I have everything under control. David, yeah. can I get your opinion on this report here? Sure. See you tomorrow, Mom. Bye-bye. Yeah, well, the complete report will be in Dr. Holmby's hands uh, first thing in the morning. Oh, all right. Well, then that should take care of it. <laughs> thank you. Listen, uh, Doug, I want to thank you and Connie for helping my daughter with that major piece of surgery on her eye just a little while ago. <laughs> well, I'm glad I was around. Well, I think it's time to go clear my desk and head home. Oh, early night for a change? Yes, I have uh, a problem to take care of there. Good night. I can almost hear your mind turning. I can't help it, David. He was just helping her get something out of her eye. I know. It's all perfectly innocent. I didn't say it wasn't. Well, and what are you thinking? At the moment, I wasn't even thinking about what we saw just now. I was thinking of my lunch today with Annie. I know that something is troubling her. Well, it's probably med school. She's been preoccupied with her classes there. I'm sure that that's a concern of hers. Do you still think there's something more? I don't know. But while we were talking, I brought up Doug's name very casually. And suddenly, Annie became very uncomfortable, and she changed the subject right away. It's not like her to be so private. It's not like her at all, and you know that, David. It's nice of you to ask me over for dinner tonight. I thank you very much. You're very welcome. Andy really enjoyed having you here. Yes, I think he did. <laughs> well, it was a pretty good meal, too, in spite of what you call potluck. <laughs> well, I just called it that because it was mostly leftovers. Mm -hmm. You don't usually serve those to a guest. To a guest? No offense, John. No, no, that's all right. That's what I am. Guest. I realize I still make you uncomfortable. I wish there was some way to change that. Well, you can't ignore the past entirely. I really do try to forget everything that's gone between us, but it's difficult. Yes. Yes, I'm sure it is. I know, I made just about every mistake in the book while we were married. And then some after we were married, too. Well, I don't have to rehash it. 
No, I really don't want to. But I'm well aware of all the difficulty I caused you, all the pain I put you through. As I said, I try not to dwell on that now. Well, I'm sure you must think of it from time to time. And when you do, I guess it's very hard to forgive someone who put you through all of that. It was a very difficult time for everybody involved, John. For me. The time I had with Dan more than made up for it, and so I just try to think about all the good memories. Mm -hmm. Well, I live with a lot of regrets. And I, I try to sometimes think positively of them, you know, have positive thoughts about it, but it's, it's kind of hard when you know how people still think about you. I suppose that's one of the reasons I, I love being with Andrew. You know, he's too young to hold anything against me. There's uh, no bad feelings there, no bad memories. We just have a nice, warm relationship. It's, it's very innocent. I'm glad. Did you tell me that uh, you've started writing another book? Yeah, yeah, I have. It's coming along pretty slowly, though. You know, When I'm here like this, in this home, with you, with Andrew, I really realize how self-destructive most of my life has been. I desperately wish that there was some way that I could change all of that. I have a lot of regrets, you know. I have many, many regrets. I understand a lot more now. I understand why you never talked about your family. I mean, why you won't let go of someone when you know it's best for everyone concerned. You don't understand? No one ever has. It's really over this time, Marcia. Not a rejection, a fact. Think about it. You realize it's better this way. I mean, if you think about it enough, maybe you'll let Doug go. Try to get your own life together. Never. Who is it? It's Doug. Come on in. Well, <laughs> I guess I should be honored since my husband made an appearance in our bedroom twice in one day. What's the big occasion? I'm not interested in your sarcasm. I want to have a long, serious talk, and I want to have it right now. Look, if it's about your leaving again, I've already told you. Why did you lie to Mrs. DeHaven? What? You told her that I said Jeff was the best man for Alex's job. Why? Well, it's getting late, Bennett. I'm afraid I'll have to go without seeing Lisa. Well, she said she'd be home shortly when she called. I suppose she found something else to buy. I'm sorry, Henry. <laughs> well, that's all right. Besides, I'll see her tomorrow in Norwich. What time's your flight? 8.30. I have a thought. Why don't you wait and have dinner with us uh, before you go out to the airport? I might even talk Lisa into going back tonight instead of waiting until tomorrow. You can probably get a couple of seats on that flight, don't you think? Oh, I would think so, but I'm not sure that Lisa will appreciate being rushed that way. <laughs> Bennett, why do you want to fly back tonight? Are you still worried about Hester? Yes. So am I. Especially since you haven't been able to get in touch with her. She told me that the 
drive to Moorcliff Sanitarium was long and hard. And the weather this time of year won't help any. Hmm. I think I'll call her right now. Operator, this is Mr. Hadley in 1508. Will you try the Norwich number again for me, please? That's right, yes, thank you. No answer? No, not yet. Hello? Esther? Is that you, Bennett? I've been trying to call you all afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry, but I just this minute got in. I'm, uh, I'm here with Dr. Bickford. I know where you've been. How is your brother? There was no real change. I've decided to put him in another hospital that I've heard about. I thought you were told there was some improvement. It was a false report. You've got nothing to worry about. Worry? I'm not worried. Why should I be? Would you give Dr. Bickford a message for me, please? Sure. What is it? Well, I drove in tonight on the back road past the old stone quarry, and his car got stuck on some ice there, and I had to walk back. Would you tell him that I'll call the garage and have it towed back in the morning? What in God's name were you doing on that old quarry road? It hasn't been used in years. Oh, it's a shortcut. You know, it's icy out there, especially at this time of year after the sun goes down. Well, I was tired after my long drive. Bennett, please don't bring Lisa back here again. I know what will happen. I can't face any more of it. Esther, don't be foolish. We're coming back tonight if... If we can, and we're getting married on schedule. Oh, no, Bennett, please don't. You know what it will be like. You've been having those headaches again. You know what will happen. Has to get hold of yourself. We'll be back tonight unless you hear from me to the contrary. <laughs> 